there is a lot of uh, things happening behind the scenes with Tesla's full self-driving technology to get excited about. We've seen the FSD beta progress continue to get better and better as each uh, kind of uh, release is made available to the public. The car is getting more and more capable and the price just seemingly gets higher and higher, which makes sense if the software is getting more advanced. Uh, but also that could quickly change really soon. According to Elon Musk himself, the long rumored full self-driving subscription service is happening very soon and should be coming in just like a matter of weeks, sometime in the early part of 2021. That could be any day now. So for those who don't know, there has been kind of this rumor floating around the Tesla universe for a while now that they are looking to take the full self-driving package and offer it as a subscription. So instead of paying eight, nine, or right now $10,000 to get full self-driving, kind of own it with the vehicle, you can instead pay hundred bucks-ish a month or so, whatever the price happens to be. And then you can have those features, but you don't actually own them. You're basically renting them from Tesla. Thinking of it kind of like, I guess, a lease, uh, but for the software, instead of the hardware, which uh, has its pros, which we'll get into, and also has its cons and its drawbacks as well. But kind of on the surface, there is a whole lot to get excited about. On one hand, this does make so much sense for Tesla because, well, look at me, for example. I am the prime candidate of someone who bought a Model 3. I love the car. I love what Tesla's doing and all that stuff. But I just don't have $10,000 to plop down just to take advantage of some cool features like full self-driving, which I know is getting better and better. And the promise is that you invest in it now and it can do more in the future. I get the whole idea, but I just can't commit $10,000 to a software package on my car. But what I would be willing to do is pay some money monthly in order to take advantage of those features when I wanted to use them and not have to pay for them when I didn't want to. It is a much more cost effective alternative in order to get customers into the program and get some money generated for Tesla without having to commit a whole bunch of money up front, which again, I know has its downsides and its upsides, uh, which we can talk about right now. If you think about it, there are a lot of upsides to Tesla offering full self-driving as a subscription service that users can pay monthly for and access. Uh, on one hand for them, it's just more money in their pocket, so to speak. Again, there are a lot of people who wanna take advantage of full self-driving and will pay for it gladly, but they just don't wanna spend $10,000 in order to get that software package. Yes, it's less money in Tesla's pocket, but it is some money nonetheless and a constant stream of money coming month after month, which just makes a whole lot of sense for everybody in Involved. Also, in terms of the end user like myself, this is a great thing for me. It gives me all the features I'd want to have access to, everything that full self-driving uh, users currently have, but also while not having to spend that kind of money, and it's a lot more flexible. It's cost effective. It's only costing me 100 bucks a month. I can use it when I want to and pay for it, and then not have to pay for it the months I don't want to use it. It just gives me ultimate control and flexibility, something I am all for, and just again, makes so much sense when you're talking about this extensive software package. But it can't all be upside, right? There's gotta be some downsides and some reasons why Tesla wouldn't want everybody doing this and then not spending the $10,000 to buy full self-driving. And there's a couple I can think of. I guess the first one is that uh, this could be a more costly uh, expense in the long run than if you were just to have invested in full self-driving. Uh, obviously it's a lot of money to spend, but if you intend on keeping your car for a while, then that money that you're spending on full self-driving could end up you know, being more than what it would have cost just to buy the package when you initially took delivery of the car. Car. You're also losing out on things like resale value because full self-driving is tied to the car for good reasons and bad. But one of the upsides is it does help with resale value. So you are kind of missing that if you're just kind of paying for that FSD monthly subscription. Also, I wouldn't be super surprised if Tesla did sort of a slower rollout of features to subscription uh, users and those who paid for it. I mean, they've got to have a way to differentiate who's doing what. And obviously the priority would be to those who have invested the money in the full amount than those who are just paying on a monthly basis and are using it some months and not using it others. So I could see that maybe there are some features limited. I'm not sure if they would kind of cherry pick all or none of the features. Like I, I think that if you pay the hundred bucks or whatever it is per month for full self driving, you're going to get all the features, but I think you're going to get a slower rollout of new features as new things become available. It's going to go probably first to those who uh, bought the full software than those who pay monthly for it. Kind of like what we have right now with software updates. Obviously we know Tesla is favoring those who have FSD over those who do not. So I think it'd be something similar here with this subscription model when that does become available. And I do have a couple of questions for you because I've seen so many people split on this idea. First off, 
how much would you pay for a full self-driving subscription service? I've seen the number float around 100 bucks a month, seems to be kind of the going rate. Would you pay 250? Would you pay 50? Uh, I'm curious to hear what you think is the kind of the golden figure here on how much you would pay per month for FSD. But also I'm curious to know where you kind of fall on FSD as a subscription. Do you like the idea or not? Because I've seen a lot of people who are adamantly against this idea for a couple of big reasons. And I think most of those reasons have to do with how Tesla currently implements full self-driving. For example, if I was to go out and buy a new Tesla right now, I'm investing $10,000 into that full self-driving package, which is a great thing because it could get more feature rich. The idea is it's an investment that's going to uh, pay dividends kind of down the line because it's gonna get more valuable, it's gonna get more expensive, and then when I turn around and sell my car a couple years later, I can recoup most of those costs. But on the other hand, uh, if I was to turn around then and sell my car and get a little bit of money, then go buy a new Tesla, I'm now paying whatever that cost is for self-driving all over again. So if the price is increased from 10,000 to 15,000, I'm not getting any kind of discount and I'm paying that full money once again. What many people want is for Tesla to make full self-driving tied to the owner or tied to the account and not tied to the individual vehicle. Yes, the added resale value is nice, but most people would like to pay for that investment of full self-driving and own it for the lifetime of their account. So if I was to pay $10,000 today, I'm a Tesla customer, I, I believe in this idea, I'm gonna invest, I would have peace of mind knowing that even if my Model 3 was to get totaled tomorrow or I bought a Roadster in seven years, that I'd still be able to have all that uh, full self-driving you know, software feature and I'd be able to take advantage of all that stuff because I invested whatever it was a number of years ago. Right now, it just is sort of an investment that you're paying for and you know maybe you're saving a couple bucks from what uh, the price could change to next month, but you're still having to go turn around and buy it all over again if you were to happen to sell your car because it's tied to the car. I think if Tesla was to change how that was implemented, many people would be very happy to see that change. The other big question is how Tesla is going to market this full self-driving subscription service with a prevailing theory around the idea of a free trial or some kind of free access. If you remember before, Tesla was offering users uh, basically kind of a free trial of some of the enhanced autopilot features, even I think autopilot itself when it was a paid feature, uh, to kind of entice users to pay that money and take advantage of those features and kind of get them hooked and then get them to pay. There's a good idea and a good chance that Tesla could do that again if full self-driving subscription became a thing. Maybe it's like premium connectivity where they're gonna give you a month free. You get full self-driving for free for a month or two months or whatever the time is. And then after that, you can either pay or not use it. I think the idea of a full self-driving uh, free trial makes so much sense. I think offering it for free is going to get many people probably like myself really hooked on it. And I think that uh, the idea of bringing back uh, that kind of uh, limited access or that free trial to new owners or something like that, which was around for a while, but then Tesla stopped doing would be a really great thing to see. And we could honestly see full self-driving as a free option for many people for at least a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or maybe even a month or two. That would be super cool to see. And I'm gonna cross my fingers that that happens because I'd love for that to become a real thing. So what are your thoughts on the FSD subscription plan? Do you like the idea? Are you willing to pay for it? How much are you willing to pay? Or do you think that it's better off to be uh, better served as an investment and not some kind of subscription thing that people can use? Uh, you either have to pony up the cash or not have access to it at all. Curious to hear your thoughts, please leave them down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching these uh, little videos. I sincerely appreciate it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld. I'll see you in the next one.